Uh, hello, this will be a demonstration of proposition four from book five of Euclid's Elements, which says that if a first magnitude be to a second, as a third is to a fourth, and equal multiples of the first and third be taken, and other equal multiples of the second and fourth be taken, then the multiple of the first is to the multiple of the second, just as the equal multiple of the third is to the equal multiple of the fourth. What this is going to look like is we're going to have four magnitudes proportional so that a is to b, just as c is to d. And of a and c, which are our first and third, we are going to have equal multiples e and f taken. And likewise, of b and d, which are our second and fourth magnitudes, we are going to have other equal multiples g and h be taken. And what we've set out to prove is that E is to G just as F is to H. So the multiple of the first E is to the multiple of the second G just as the multiple of the third F is to the multiple of the fourth H. We begin by taking further equal multiples K and L of E and F respectively. And we also take other equal multiples M and N of G and H respectively. Then, E and F being equal multiples of A and C respectively, and we have further equal multiples K and L taken of E and F, then X I quali through the common terms E and F, we can say by proposition 5, 3, that K and L are also equal multiples of A and C respectively, so that the multiple that K is of A is the same multiple that L is of C. We can prove in a similar manner that M and N are equal multiples of B and D respectively. So right, we have G and H, which are um, equal multiples of B and D that was given. And we have further equal multiples M and N taken of G and H respectively, which means then by proposition 5, 3, X I quali through the equal, we can say that M and N are equal multiples of B and D respectively so that the multiple that m is of b is the same multiple that n is of d. Now, a being to b, just as c um, is to d, right? We were given that proportion, that a is to b as c is to d. We were given that. We can then say by definition 5, 5, that if k is greater than m, then l will also be greater than n. And if k be equal to m, then n will also be equal to n. And finally, if k be less than m, then l is less than n. This is all by definition 5-5, five, five, which defines proportion, that a first magnitude is said to be to a second as a third is to a fourth. If equal multiples of the first and third alike exceed, alike are equal, or alike fall short of other equal multiples of the second, and fourth. And given this situation about k, m, l, and n, and knowing that k and l are equal multiples of e and f, and also that m and n are equal multiples of g and h, right, we made k, l, m, and n such that they are equal multiples of e, f, g, and h respectively. We can then say, again, by definition 5-5 five, five going in the other direction, given the situation about their um, equal multiples, we can then say that as E is to G, so F is to H, this being what we set out to prove, we are done with the proposition, therefore, etc. Q E D. Two things to note about this proposition. This is the first time that definition 5-5 five, five is used, and it's used in what might strike you as an interesting way. Um, so definition 5-5 five, five defines proportion, but you'll notice that Euclid uses it in both directions. So he says in step, um, yeah, in step four right here, that given that four magnitudes are proportional, then their equal multiples have this, um, have this sort of relationship that uh, they like exceed, alike equal, or like um, fall short of the other equal multiples. So in that case, he goes from proportion to the equal multiples. But then in the final step, step five, he goes from the, from the situation about the equal multiples to the proportion. So what you can only reason from there is that definition five, five is what we would call a biconditional. That it is not only um, saying that if the equal multiples are such, 
then we have a proportion. It is also saying if we have a proportion, then the equal multiples are such. It's what we call a biconditional. Not only if p then q, but also if q then p. So that's an important thing to note about definition 5.5. Five. The other interesting, um, or not the other interesting thing to note, but um, what, make, what might make this proposition uh, more accessible is to put it again in algebraic terms, which is what I've been doing for the past few propositions. And what this is gonna look like is um, saying that um, if you have a proportion that A is to B, just as C is to D, then MA, right, some multiple of A, is to another multiple is to another multiple nb of b, just as mc is to nd, right? So if we have a is to b as c is to d, then ma is to nb, just as mc is to nd. Another way we might write this out is um, also writing this with fractions, right? Because we can write ratios as fractions. So if we have a divided by b, or a over b being equal to c over d, that's all a proportion is really. What Euclid is saying is that you can multiply by m on both sides, or not what Euclid is saying, but how we might understand Euclid is that we can multiply by m, n, n, m divided by n on both sides. So we can multiply by m on both sides, and then also multiply by one over n on both sides to get an equivalent statement so that m, a, over nb is equal to mc over nd. Now this is, you know, just gonna be kind of straightforward, right? We've been uh, solving, we've been using this kind of technique, multiplying um, the same thing on both sides of an equation since, I don't know, how long have you guys been solving equations? I started solving them in fifth grade, could have been fourth for you, I don't know, could have been sixth, I don't know. But point is that, um, that, um, we're establishing a sort of like property of equality about multiplication. So you can multiply um, an equation on, on both sides, or you can divide an equation on both sides, which is just multiplying by the reciprocal. It's, you know, that's standard stuff. Uh, but you can multiply um, the same thing on both sides of an equation and maintain the equation, or you can divide by the same thing on both sides and still maintain the equation. And um, what proposition 5-4, or how we might understand it now, what it is, what all that it's doing is just crunching these, um, those two statements down into one. So that's all I have to say about this proposition. So I will uh, end the video here and move on to proposition five, five.